thanks to generous support from a private donor, the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, and the National Science Foundation, an international team of experts assembled by the Virtual World Heritage Laboratory, have been working since 2007 to create a three-dimensional digital reconstruction of Hadrian's Villa. The villa is a World Heritage Site located 30 kilometers east of Rome at Tivoli. Built during the reign of the Roman Emperor Hadrian, the estate was a government retreat covering some 200 acres, including 30 major building complexes, formal gardens, orchards, and woods. The site was abandoned in late antiquity, stripped of its art and building materials in later centuries, and rediscovered in the Renaissance. After five centuries of survey and excavation, scholars are now able to create an evidence-based digital reconstruction of the villa in the age of Hadrian. The ancient visitor approached the villa along an access road that led to the vestibule or reception complex. Today, very little remains of the vestibule. The digital model recreates the experience of the ancient visitor. After ascending a monumental staircase, he entered the great courtyard of the vestibule and then proceeded left into an impressive reception hall. Here, the guest was formally greeted by the emperor's staff. Depending on the time of day, he was invited to bathe or dine. The visitor would bathe in the nearby small baths. If he brought any servants, they would use the large baths. After undressing, the visitor to the small baths proceeded through the various cold, warm, and hot rooms of this ornately furnished bathing complex. In warm weather, the visitor could retrace his steps from the small baths through the vestibule and dine in a park conventionally known today as the Canopus. The Canopus had a long canal, 1.7 meters deep, flanked by colonnades and gardens. Sculpture was prominently displayed here. Altogether, over 150 statues are known to have a certain provenience from this and other parts of Hadrian's villa. Here we see four caryatids bookended by two Silenus figures. Platforms set in the water support two copies of a Scylla statue group. At the rounded end of the canal stood statues of two Amazons, a warrior, and other sculpture. Banquets were held in a vaulted structure known as the Serapeum. Diners reclined on cushions atop a large, semicircular stone couch known as a stabadium. On an elevated platform, the emperor and his closest friends could dine. Beyond the platform, water cascaded to either side of a statue niche, cooling the air. The whoosh of the waterfall was amplified by the cavernous serapeum and emitted down the canopus.
Of course, the flow of the water could be regulated or stopped. Design elements prominent in the Canopus, such as water features and sculpture integrated with architecture, are repeated elsewhere in the villa. A case in point is the entrance to the part of the estate known as the Academy. This part of the villa was approached from a long terrace with a formal garden. Through the curved colonnade opposite the facade was a garden in which statues of a young and old centaur were displayed. They attracted the visitor's gait and gaze. Visitors typically visited the villa to conduct public business with the emperor. This was done in special audience halls, such as the Hall of the Philosophers or the Hall of the Doric Pillars. The Hall of the Doric Pillars was adjacent to the Imperial Palace. The visitor entered through a semicircular garden courtyard leading into a great hall paved in marble. Around the hall were pillars in the Doric order. At 20 meters by 27.5 meters in size, the room could easily have accommodated several hundred people. Important visitors might be invited to meet privately with the emperor in a suite of rooms known as the Maritime Theater. Visitors came to the villa for other reasons. There were two theaters where plays were performed. The villa also had an amphitheater for animal hunts and gladiatorial combats. Adjacent to the amphitheater was a large banquet area today known as the Piazza d'Oro. On holidays, people might come to join the court and worship at the Temple of Venus, the Antinoeon, the Temple of Isis, or at a tower-like structure given the modern name, Rocca Bruna. The lower story of Rocca Bruna is fairly well preserved, but the round temple on top has completely disappeared. The 3D model allows us to visualize the monument's original appearance we do not know the name of the god to whom the upper round temple was dedicated. The Egyptian goddess Isis was worshipped in the lower rotunda. After the villa fell into disuse, the rotunda was despoiled of its decorative elements. The 3D model restores the sanctuary's statue of Isis, the marble floors, walls, and the celestial motif painted on the dome. Recently, several scholars have speculated that Rocca Bruna was built to be in alignment with the setting sun on the summer solstice, a date holy to Isis Fortuna on the Roman religious calendar. Because of the precession of the equinoxes, this alignment has been lost over the centuries. The 3D model allows us to position the sun in the sky at any hour of the day and any day of the year during Hadrian's reign. Here we see how the sun's light dramatically illuminated the statue at precisely sunset on June 21st. If we stand in front of the cult statue and look toward the front door, we see the sun setting on the horizon. The 3D model can be used not only to confirm scholarly theories, but also to generate new insights and understanding. The Ideal Lab of Ball State University, a partner of the project, has imported the 3D model to a game engine. 
This allows scholars to search in real time for new, unsuspected alignments between celestial features and buildings at Hadrian's Villa. The game engine also supports avatars representing visiting Roman citizens and members of the court. Scholars use the avatars to test theories about the structure and function of the court. Teachers at the University of Virginia and elsewhere are using the virtual villa in their classes. In exit interviews, students tell experts on educational assessment that they find the virtual villa an effective learning resource. I mean, I definitely think it helped me navigate and yeah. just realize like, oh, this is what it, like, this is what it looks like. Because yeah. It's hard to get that from like a blueprint yeah. or like that, even like yeah. artists constructions or whatever mm -hmm. that was I think the most helpful part because before well once we had the virtual world when we said oh like the Pachile we like know what we're talking about but before it was just this sort of like abstract like oh well we know it's here on a map and we know like you walked in it but like that's pretty much mm -hmm. all we knew but now we can be like oh yeah and it has that fountain in the middle and those two little like yeah. full of things and like I don't know, I feel like it's just more of like a reference for us. And it was really helpful for navigating the villa too. Yeah. Um, especially once we got the one where you could like walk between different buildings. That was super, that super was for helpful. Number nine, yeah. Yeah. And there's it's it's a big leap to go from Professor Frischer talking about all these certain types of marble in these buildings or the opus sectile walls, um, and then actually being able to see that. So it just makes it realer, mm -hmm. I suppose. With the virtual world, like to actually like navigate through places, and then as um, Professor Frischer was um, talking about how your your brain like remembers places, and I think that would that really does help with our learning because I really remember like oh the antenna way on is you know here, and I remember and them better as you the like navigate world. through places. You remember oh like oh yeah, this is right beside this place because I walked through here on the virtual world. So I think that's really helpful. I think, yeah, I think going off of her, we were able to be more confident about like, oh, this is here and that's yeah. there. Yeah. And this is how you get to these places. Yeah. Um, but so, now, yeah. I think like being able to visualize it like helped a ton. Thank you.